my man, Angelo Cataldi, who has been interviewing this clown for three years. Seriously, man. He, he's right. He was interviewing Bozo. I cannot believe how right on he's been. The Bible of sports fans in Philadelphia loud. Our friend Angelo. My God almighty. <laughs> Dan, you're right. By the way, you're right. Problem solving. That's how you know if a guy can coach. Did this guy solve any problems this year? Anything? Even when they were 10 and 1, they were 29th in pass defense. Did he fix it? Did anything happen? Did he know how to fix anything? Nick Sirianni needs to be fired to death. Not tomorrow's too late, Dan. He needs to go today so this the pain in the city of Philadelphia can start to you know go away a little bit. Because right now, man, not happy. City how now. shocked were you, Angelo? How shocked were you last night with the lack of effort and will of the team? Yeah, that was a big part of it. The tackling. Wow. The ta even Hurts once passed up a block. But Hurts normally, he's he's the guy you, you he's gonna give it to you every play. No, they all they had checked out. They were done weeks ago. They were done before the Arizona game. You don't lose to Arizona, right? They were done before the last Giants game where they, they got clobbered, killed. It's Look, we've all, in Philadelphia, we have met our share of disappointments, starting with 1964. There are people still alive who watched the Phillies collapse in the last week of the season. This is second to that. This is second to that. This is the second worst collapse by a Philadelphia sports team in our history. And you don't survive that if you were the coach of it. You can't survive it. He's got to go today. I'm begging you today. Not tomorrow. It's too late tomorrow. You think that they're in the process right now of evaluating that, Angelo, where yeah. he, you, you think he's fired by the end of the week? It all comes down to a simple thing. How much of the, the decisions that were made were not his anyway? I'll give you an example. When they panicked uh, a few weeks into this collapse and went from Sean Desai to Matt Patricia, I do not for a second believe that was a decision made by Nick Sirianni. I think that was a decision made by the guys that brought Matt Patricia in despite his all he did in the last two or three gigs he had was fail spectacularly. And they said, no, let's bring Matt Patricia in. And then they saw that the thing, it was they were 10 and three at the time, and they went, yeah, no, let's bring in this veteran mind. He'll be great. <laughs> and somehow, improbably, he took an awful defense and made it worse, right? So they may look at that and go, well, you know, that wasn't Nick. What it will come down to is, who are they going to find that's as big a puppet as Nick Sirianni? Because all they seem to want now are puppets. It's why they lost Doug, Doug Peterson. It's why they brought this guy in who had no clue what he was doing. And it's, what are they going to do? They're going to go out and get another offensive or defensive coordinator from someplace who never had a head coaching job? Is that how it's going to work? No. You, you want the answer? I'll give you the answer right now. Mike Vrabel's the answer. Mike Vrabel's a good coach. Mike Vrabel will not. You know what the first thing he would do if they brought in Mike Vrabel? He would announce the country club is closed. No more uh, taking off the preseason. No playing in the preseason to get ready. No more Ben with don't break defense, which breaks anyway. No more of, of, of not figuring out how to stop a blitz because they never had a Last night, Dan, did you ever see a blitz less camouflage than what Todd Bowles was doing last night? He was telegraphing it, and they couldn't figure out a damn thing to do. No, he, it's all got to happen now. It's got to happen soon, and, and they got to change their philosophy, and they got to bring in a coach that they allowed to do his job and get the hell out of the way and let a smart, strong-minded coach do the job. That's what they need to do. Angelo, how disappointed were you in Hurts last night? 
I was disappointed in him. He he um he looked like he was done before they even started. Almost he had the he had the glove on his hand, and then before he even threw a ball, he pulls the glove off, and he's got this stuff on his. I don't think that was the reason he sucked. I believe part of the reason was he had very little time to get rid of the ball, and part of the reason was they don't make play calls that adjust to what the defense is doing. The play calling is atrocious. It was bad all year. So I, here's how I look at it. Last year, he was a terrific quarterback with Shane Steichen as his coach. So you, I'm not writing off Jalen Hurts because of this bad season. I'm saying I need him to be with a very good coach again and see if he can get back what he had in 2022. If he can't, then all right, now you got a problem because you're committed $250 million to him. But I'm not, I am not saying we're at the end of the line with Jalen Hurts. We are at the end of the line with Nick Sirianni and all of the stiffs on his staff, possibly with the exception of Jeff Stoutland, the offensive line coach. Otherwise, you know, you, I would clean house. Get them all out. They don't know what they're doing. How about this, Angelo? When you go back and I watch the last three uh, games, and to me, it just seems that that offense is so one-on-one -on -one driven. Wow. Like, hey, you go make a play. We'll try to get the ball to you. And then when you watch Sean McVay and Kyle and you watch Brady up in Buffalo, you watch all these other guys getting these guys open, like the guy in Green Bay, all these all these routes that are designed to get guys open. It just seems to me in Philly, it's like one-on-one, -on -one, go AJ, go make a play. Go, you don't make a play. Don't. It, it, it's just not creative enough. Do you think that they'll – right. do you think they'll go out? See, to me, Angelo – they're not going to look at Mike Vrabel. They're going to look at names like this, Brian Johnson, OC mm -hmm. Lions, Slowick, OC mm -hmm. Texans, mm -hmm. Frank Smith, OC Dolphins. Laurie's never hired mm -hmm. a former NFL head coach in his time since he's owned the team. Right. Do you think he breaks that now and does well, that? If not now, never, because you can't have a bigger collapse than they have. All right? You can't do worse than they did the last seven games. You went from the, the team that was going to have home field for the playoffs again, and, and you were the odds-on favorite to go back to the Super Bowl. And now you're out in the wild card round because you lost six out of seven. If that doesn't get you to change your philosophy, Dan, then nothing's going to get it. This is, this is the ultimate test. Is he going to look at it and finally say, boy, you know, I love that one year we won it. I think I'm going to get somebody in here who knows what he's doing and I'm going to get the hell out of the way. And I'm going to take my son and his analytics with him. And I'm going to take Howie Rose. I'm going to say, Howie, just bring in some players and then get out of the way. Because we don't know how to coach. They don't know how to coach. Leary has no idea how to coach. I don't care how many years he owned the team. L Roseman. Roseman, I think, is a solid GM. I really still have faith in him in talent evaluation. But I have no faith in him trying to decide who's coaching who and what they're doing. You need a coach to do that. Get the hell out of the way now. This is the test. The next few days, Dan, will tell you more about the Philadelphia Eagles and how they run than anything we've seen in a long time. How are they going to approach this? Are they going to keep the puppet in place and try to surround him with other people who will do their bidding? Or will they clean house and bring in somebody who's smart and strong and will take already a solid uh, a talent base. Not a great one now. They're going to lose some people. But the, a solid talent base and build that back up. That's going to be the big test. Do you think, Angelo, what's what's more of a priority in your mind? Firing Nick Sirianni or redefining the role of Howie Roseman and when it comes to football yeah. operations? Um, there is nothing that is a higher priority than getting Nick Sirianni out of that building. Nick Sirianni does not know how to coach. I'm not saying coach at a head coach level. I'm saying coach at any level. Keep in mind, they brought this guy in who was an offensive coordinator, right? And within, what, three weeks of him being the head five. coach? What, whatever it was, he went, oh, I'm not that good at calling plays. <laughs> and he gave the job to Steichen, right? You sure he gave it or do you think they took it? Well, that's another good question. I don't know who did it, but He's not, he wasn't calling plays. So he wasn't calling plays on offense. He didn't fix the offense at any point. 
And he doesn't do much with defense, right? That was Gannon, and then it was Desai and Patricia. So what does he do? This, is it because he's brilliant at news conferences? No, he actually sucks at that too. All he does is give you cliches and mumbo jumbo. So what exactly? That's the way I would start the assessment of Sirianni. Let's start by deciding what he does well. Does he create a good culture? Did you no. see the way the game was played yesterday? They no. didn't even want to play it. So the culture wasn't good. What was good that he did? Nothing. I, I've never, I've not, I, I, I always wondered what his job was. <laughs> Seriously, I didn't, after they took, because remember something, how the premise on why he was hired was because he was a great boutique supposed play designer. Yeah. And when he went two and five, I went like this after the, when he got out to that two and five start, I went, okay, well then what exactly is his defining role now? He never really yeah. had a defining role except for jumping on, benches screaming right. at fans and giving shitty press conferences and yeah. lying to the media that's lying. the only jobs that i really can ever think that he ever did that really were something that we remember remember something think about this angelo i remember him lying at a press conference i remember his shitty play calling i remember him jumping on benches and screaming at colts and chief fans <laughs> that's the only thing i remember the guy did that's all he did and if he were to get fired years from now that's all people will remember they won't remember that he went to a Super Bowl. Improbable as that is, he went to a Super Bowl. And what did they do? They fell apart in the second half. Couldn't stop a play. The dead. No, it, get him out. Get Lovey him Smith river. went to a Super Bowl too, Angelo. Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> okay. No, I'm telling you, Dan, that's the priority right now. Because I'm, I still, a little part of me still fears that they will realize they will never find a better puppet than Nick Sirianni, and they'll find a way to polish this turd and bring him back. And I'll tell you right now, I'll give you, Nostral Damas yeah. is now appearing. Yeah. Four-win team next year if he's back as the coach. Four wins. You do the math on that, that would be 13 losses. That's what you're looking at if you bring this guy back now, because this thing is broken. And nobody's putting this back together unless you bring in a whole new crew. Would you bring in Frank Reich? You know, that's an interesting one because that might be the one veteran guy Lurie He's friends would be with willing Nick. to do. Because Lurie has a good history with him. Reich has been good at working, you know, politically within what the Eagles have structured as the front office. Um, he is definitely an offensive mind. He is way smarter than Sirianni will ever be. So it would be an upgrade for sure. But then you would have to ask yourself, all right, you know what? You've now addressed the offense. I think you'd be great for Hurts. There's a lot of good there. But, man, you better bring in a guy to run the defense who does not run the defense in the passive, stupid way. They have run it from the time that Sirianni and Gannon got here. You need people. I, 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 this name keeps coming up to me because Seth Joyner went on TV today and he said they need to fire Sirianni. I work with Seth, right? Seth Joyner is such a brilliant resource of football in this city. He is so smart, so aggressive, so tough, so inspiring. The fact that he's doing TV and radio instead of on that sideline, is a disgrace, but they're afraid of him because he's strong. And that's a that's look, I'm not saying he should be defense coordinator. I make him my linebacker coach and I groom him to be that. That's the kind of mentality I would love for the Eagles to have. But uh, Angelo, I've that. asked him on my program numerous yeah. times and last year. Yeah, I said, Seth, if the Philadelphia Eagles offered you the defensive coordinator position, would you take it? And on my program, actually. You were still on the air. WIP actually put it on the Twitter page. Seth said, I would I would take the job, and yeah. I would take the job as defensive coordinator. Well, fast forward, I asked him like two weeks prior, after that, and I said, did the Eagles ever contact you for any kind of advice or any kind of uh, interview? And he goes, I, I reached out to them and asked them if we wow. could have a conversation, wow. and they had no interest in that me amazing. coming aboard. He said that on my program here. 
but they had interest in Sean Desai and Matt Patricia. Based on what? Based on what? No, it, it, this is the problem. Look at D'Amico Ryans, what he's doing in Houston. Oh, he was right here. And you saw, when he was here, you said, wow, that guy's got it. But that guy knows what he's doing. He's smart. He, he would be a great head coach, and he is. We let him go. Why? Again, I think he was too strong for Lurie. Why Lurie are they so afraid of authority figures? Because they're insecure. Because they're base. Uh, uh, Jeff Lurie, let's be honest here. Jeff Lurie was born on third base. He still thinks he hit a triple, right? Um, um, Howie Roseman was an accountant and a lawyer. And, and they're running an NFL franchise. And they still look around every once in a while and they go, how the hell did we get this? This is great. Well, Lurie got it because his mother was a publishing magnate. And Roseman got it because Lurie got tired of Banner. And so he put his next buddy in. That's what Lurie does. You understand? They showed Lurie at the end of the game in the stand, you know, up in the luxury box. And he looked crestfallen. Yeah, he He's like really sad like this, right? And you're going, yeah, but what are you going to do about it? Are you going to continue to find people who do your bidding or are you going to bring in a guy that knows how to run a football team? When are you going to do it? If not now, Dan, never. This is the test right now. Do you think that a person like Belichick would ever be on the minds of no. that guy, or do you think that's just way off the reservation? Way off. Way off. That is no. No. The minute you would call in Bill Belichick, uh, Bill Belichick is way too uh, headstrong for them. That would be a, a no possibility whatsoever. That's why I said maybe Reich, because Reich could work with them. Belichick, the first, within an hour, at the first meeting on a Tuesday, in Jeff Lurie's office, where Lurie's saying, and here's my philosophy on this. And, and Belichick would look at him and go, your philosophy, what are you talking about? You have an owner. Yeah, you don't have a philosophy. Bring in people who run football. Would you bring in somebody to run your businesses, your billion-dollar uh, sports team? Bring in people that know what they're doing. You don't. He doesn't. Anybody that thinks he does is kidding themselves. How about this, Angelo? There was a story a couple days ago that Javon Hardgrave and you know, Javon Hardgrave is not yeah. a hot take guy. He now plays for obviously for San Francisco mm -hmm. and he was on the George Kittle podcast yeah. and it got, um, it got posted in San SF gate the newspaper out there. That's with the Chronicle. And he, he, he was talking, he goes, you know, Kyle Shanahan was talking about why it's important to run the ball on first down for us so that we can keep yeah. third down third and short play action pass and all that. And he sat there, not meaning to throw any shade on Sirianni, but listen what he said. He goes like this. He goes, I learned more in 20 minutes of listening to Kyle Shanahan than anything I learned in the two years that I was in Philadelphia. And you knew who he was talking about when he said it. Yeah. He goes, in 20 minutes, I learned more listening why you run the ball immediately out of the gate yeah. for your quarterback and how important it is than anything I learned in Philadelphia. And I thought that was a true statement of what he, that guy in Philly does not know. Oh, without a doubt. He also said in the same interview that he couldn't believe when he got to San Francisco how much more intensely they practiced, how much more prepared they were for games because of what they did in practice, not being timid all the time about the possibility of injuries. That's why I said that the first announcement after they get rid of Sirianni is the country club is closed, all right? They need to attack it much more. As for running the ball early, damn, I don't know if you were as entertained as I was, but Troy Aikman was there, right? And I was listening to him. And I, I like Troy Aikman. I, I feel he teaches me some football. And he starts out and he goes, let me tell you what the Eagles are going to do here. I've talked to some people. They're going to pound the ball. They're going to shorten that clock so the defense is not on the field as much, and they're going to use the strength of their offensive line and pound the ball. First down, run. Second down, first down. They got they get first down on the first two plays runs. The remainder of the first half, they ran the ball one time. <laughs> Hertz is getting devoured. 
people, they said he had roughly two seconds after the snap to release the ball. And they're not trying to counteract that with a running game that is actually better right now than the passing game. They don't do it. One call for a pass. And Aikman's over there in the second quarter, Dan, and he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> they've, they've got a first down on the first. Why aren't they running? And he's all upset. We're going, what the new I world? We got fans in the stands chanting. Run the ball. Run the ball. And, and Tampa. Listen to them either. They had, some people are incorrigible. They cannot be fixed. They cannot be fooled or educated. That is this coaching staff. You know what, Angelo? I I now, and I, I like history, and I like to see teams. Like, I look at Baltimore, and I see how Baltimore runs their organization. It's great every year. They've had some few peaks and valleys, but they always work out of a problem like they did this past year with Lamar. It's such a great, well organization. And then I look at the Eagles and I'm thinking to myself that 17 Super Bowl, it just puts the cherry on top of the cake that that organization is completely taking credit for that Super Bowl when it was that coaching staff and that head coach who won that. If this doesn't put the exclamation point, Yes. On why that team lost last year was because of shitty coaching and why this thing fell apart this year, Angelo, shitty coaching. I don't know what else has to put more of a stamp on it. It's a great point. Great point. That was uh, the product of a, uh, a courageous quarterback and a bold coach, and they figured it out. And they somehow overcame a defense that was awful that day, that, that, at the Super Bowl, 52. And um, they did it. And thank God they did, because I'll be honest with you, I doubt we're going to see another one while Jeff Lurie's the owner of the Eagles. I doubt it. Wow. Not unless, not unless he takes a lesson from what we just witnessed. Well, he has, he ha- Angelo, he has gone off the reservation with Chip. Chip was just the yeah. wrong guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Chip yeah. was the wrong guy, but he did deviate off his plan there. He did for a very brief period, but... He was so determined to fire Chip, he didn't even wait for the last game. <laughs> he got rid of him the game before last. That's how determined he was. Uh, this time around, Chip was not a puppet. This guy's a puppet. This guy, Lurie would love to keep a puppet around. That's what I'm waiting to see. Uh, if he does, if he keeps him around, or if he brings in another a novice head coach from some other program, you're doomed. If he brings in a smart, strong, proven coach, you got a chance. This talent there, you got a chance. Two last questions for you. Um, what's next, do you think, here? And how do you think, knowing the behavior of the owner, will this be a long process? Will this well, be a short process? Or do you think we're going to see something happen like within the next couple of days here? Because right, somebody's, yeah. somebody, somebody's ass has, somebody's going to jail here. <laughs> yeah, you know no, I mean? it, it'll it's be decided. Deal. It'll be decided within a week, I would say. Yeah, for sure. Um, let me put it this way. All right. I have uh, really enjoyed my weekly appearances on your uh, show here, Dan. It's been great. Um, I really have only one final appearance I'm planning with your approval. Please. So that will be the day after Nick Seriani is fired. And um, can I put an addendum on that? What if, yeah. and, or if they agree to bring them back? Okay, either way, but I really want them to be fired because the one thing I've never done on the air in my life is drink alcohol. And that day, <laughs> man, I plan I will spring for champagne. I'll have a shot with you. Have a champagne. We're going to have champagne to toast the departure of one of the worst coaches I've ever seen. A guy who never told the truth about anything for three years. I don't care he made the playoffs every year. I can't stand Nick Sirianni, and he's got to go, and we'll toast him. Now, if they announce they're coming back, I will come back, but then all I'll do is bitch, and nobody wants to hear me bitch, Dan. I've never done that before. You think he's the worst coach in Eagle history? (sighs) Wow, that's a good one. Joe Q. Harrick, Rich Kotite. The Nick guy who, who was the guy around oh. Vermeil when Vermeil took over? 
people will laugh at you and he'll they'll say, the guy, look at his record. Is that Hugh Campbell? Fantastic. 34 and 20, whatever his record is. He's he's not the worst coach. All I know is what I see. He has never passed the eye test for me. Even when he was winning, I would look at him and go, it just doesn't seem like that guy knows what the hell he's doing. And I still believe Steichen was the brains of the operation for the last two years, and the wheels came off at 10-1 and one this year. The wheels came off, and you saw, you saw Harry High School. That's what we used to call him, Harry High School. <laughs> I, you know, I can't even call him that now because that defames high school coaches. No, I call him. I, I call him Nick Pinocchio. Just look at the way he figured nothing out about the blitz. Nothing. Nothing. All these weeks, nothing. <laughs> he uh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Mike McCormick, Marion Campbell, Rich Kotai. No. Or, no. Or Marion Campbell was better. I covered Marion Campbell. Mike McCormick was bad, but he was a pretty good GM. So I'm going to give him a pass. It's three guys, the two K boys, Kuharik and Kotite, and Sirian. And right now, I guess Kotite would still win, but Siriani is in their fight. He's in your top three for sure. Absolutely. Wow. Angelo, I, I hey, have you ever seen the Eagles melt down like this? No. No one has. No one has. So you compared us to the 64 Phillies when they yeah. had a nuclear meltdown. It's not as bad as the Phillies. The Phillies, people were already buying tickets, and they they were sure we were in the World Series, all that. And Then Chico Ruiz stole home, and uh, all hell broke loose. No, it's not quite there, because that's the most famous collapse in the history of all sports. But this one is our second worst, without a doubt. And if Sirianni survives this, well, it'd be like a cockroach in a nuclear war. You know? <laughs> Holy God. I hope not. Oh, you did this for 35 years of WIP. Holy shit, you must have been holy hell. Oh, man. I, I don't made know a lot of enemies, man. <laughs> oh, how did she keep you in control here? How's the book coming? The book's great. The book tour has ended, but I just finished uh, recording the audio book, which, by the way, was a lot harder than it sounds. And it will be out in the spring. And I'll give you more information when I got it. But it was uh, the book has been a tremendous experience to me and all the people. I just wish I could add a chapter now so I could rip Sirianni. Because <laughs> I didn't do enough of it in the book. <laughs> oh My, my only regret. <laughs> oh, my God, Angelo. What a great, great performance here. By the way, your segments absolutely now are annihilating. And people around the city now. I mean, you get 50, 60,000 people watching your segment here with us each and every single week you come on now. Wow. So I want to thank you very much. And again, thank you for doing that for me. Yeah, and I will be I will be on again with a glass of champagne in my hand. I'm going to have one with you then. Yeah. Because, I hey, get I, right. don't, I don't know why it's just been you and me, but at the I've never bought in from day one. And it wasn't no. because of the hokey press conference at first because I saw Dan Campbell do a hokey one. And I was like... Mm. I don't know. Let me see the guy coach. Yeah. But then you start going like this. That guy you buy into. That guy is a liar. Yeah. You, you, you just don't. I mean, I've never seen a guy in Philadelphia be more not genuine in a city than that guy there. I, I It just right. it, it shocks me. Dan, I want to say one last thing because I do it. I've been doing a ton of these lately, especially during the book tour. There is nobody anywhere talking football, who knows it as well as you do. And you on the Eagles are phenomenal. I'm, I mean that. I'm not Thank just you. saying that. You really understand the game. And and people, keep listening to Dan Saleo because he's not going to lead you wrong. He knows what's going on. And his takes on this stuff are phenomenal. You're amazing. Angelo, you know, one of my big regrets is that I didn't, you know, um, I'm trying to think of the program director that you had there prior. Andy, Andy Bloom. Andy Bloom. Andy Bloom was going to bring me in and Andy was going to hire me, but then he lost his job and he goes, he, they were going to, I think you had a guy by the name of Josh Innes or something. Yeah. I was supposed to replace That's him. And yeah. It just, it, then that whole, the, then the CBS stuff and the um, Odyssey stuff kind of got in the way there a little bit. Sure. I was going to do it. And I, I, it's a regret that I wish I had done. Mm -hmm. And now I had come to WIP because to me, that was the place I went. I did it in Boston for a little bit at the EEI. 
Yeah. I was up for about a year, but I really wanted to do IP instead of EEI. But I, I, it's a regret because you're one of my favorite hosts of all time. And I'm, it's, an, it's an honor to have you as my friend now. Thank well, you. There's the one thing, Dan, if you and I were both on the same um, Oh, my station, God. The, the program director would have to be treated for some sort of a nervous <laughs> condition. Because between the two of us, we would kill the poor guy. Oh, my God. He, he'd have to have a pad and a pencil. <laughs> he'd, have, he'd have to have a – he would, hey, Angelo, he wouldn't be a PD. He'd be a psychiatrist. <laughs> it would have been fun, though. It would Absolutely, have been fun. Angelo. Thank you, my friend. See you good. Be well, Dan. Take Got care, it. Our buddy. good friend, Angelo Cataldi. Don't forget the book here. Oh, my God. Can you imagine Angelo Cataldi and myself? on the same station yeah holy cow that thing may have been a train wreck to say the least so wow he's the worst coach in eagle history and he's he he's gonna take a toast when he gets fired Holy cow. All I could say is, wow. Our good friend Tone, Gary Cobb will join us at 4.30 from Fox 29. Oh, <laughs> Angelo and Sills would get shot day one. <laughs> ah, that to me, LJ, is a compliment. Because if I can make anybody crazy like that, believe me, you should see my DMs. It's all good. Hey, don't forget to start the new year. 2024 calendars are out with our great friends at Hooters. Nine of the girls are featured in the Hooter calendar of 2024. $100 in coupons. By the way, we give you a chance to win gift certificates like Lawrence and Howard. Congratulations to those guys. Don't forget, this weekend, divisional round football. $2 off every pitch or $1 goes to local charities. NortheastHooters.com. That's NortheastHooters.com. Tuesdays by 10 wings, get 10 boneless free. Kids eat for free on Saturdays. That's northeasttutors.com, northeasttutors.com. And when you roll in, do me a favor. You tell them Big Sill sent you. Hooters, the perfect pair.